I'm joined by Phil Mattingly. Phil, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. How long have you been at CNN? This will be year nine. Year nine. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Phil is here to discuss one of the 100 movies on the New Republic's list, published last year of the top 100 most significant political films of all time. Operative word there, significant. Not necessarily best, but this definitely also would qualify as one of the best. Won the Oscar for Best uh, Documentary 1974, Hearts and Minds. Why'd you choose Hearts and Minds? Honestly, the list was spectacular, but this is one that was really personal to me. And I think I first saw it where a lot of people in my generation were dealing with the Iraq war and were dealing with a lot of the documentaries that were coming out in that time, No End in Sight, Taxi to the Dark Side, and came across this around that same time. And I think that any documentary since then has pulled to some degree from this. And I think what I, what I was so struck by in kind of the moment where I discovered it and, and really became passionate about it, watched it several times is, you know, I'm an army brat. My father was in the military. My grandfather was killed in Vietnam. You're supposed to have a very specific viewpoint on these things that would be antithetical to right. the story that's being told here. And I think that's the value of it is to make you stop and think. You may not agree with everything or the perspective of everything. Veterans certainly aren't a monolith coming out of Vietnam, but the ability without any narration, purely through interviews and footage to tell a story and whether you think the story is entirely accurate or you have different perspectives on things, you can't deny that for a country that had gotten itself into an awful war that had wide ranging repercussions on society, on individuals, but not just here, also there. It was a truth telling two hours that I don't think has much parallel, certainly at the time and when it came out, the war hadn't even ended. Yes, this is an incredibly powerful story. And the criticism of it is that it didn't tell the full picture. And I always bristle at that because a full picture is, and something as complicated in this is never told. Right. What Hearts and Minds did was tell a part of the story that had been neglected almost from the start of the war. So to me, Hearts and Minds is a vital part of filling in a complete Vietnam story. I think that's such an important point. You don't have to watch the movie and think it tells every piece of every part of an extraordinarily dynamic and complex story. What it does is for the first time, and it was followed, you know, Fog of War is uh, kind of a, a similar representation to some degree, of showing the contrast of what public officials said, right. what was actually true, but also what was happening on the ground. Th there was simply nothing that existed at that moment that showed what was happening to the Vietnamese people. And you can be patriotic and still recognize the humanity in that. And, and it just simply hadn't existed prior to that. And that has a power that beforehand, I don't think people recognize. Yeah, the key takeaways here are what was happening to the men and women in South Vietnam and North Vietnam. Because basically at the time, there were two stereotypes. The stereotype of the North was that the, these were the, the communists, uh, over, communist overlords and that they were uh, brutal and dictatorial, period, right? And the South was inept and corrupt, right? And they were bad allies. And the, this film brought to the American public, those who saw it, a, a first time look and a recognition like, oh wait, <laughs> they are exactly like us, right? They value life. They value family they value their society the same amount that Americans yeah. do. You would say that out loud and say, well, yeah, obviously. No, at the time, that wasn't well, the belief or understanding. And you'll see that reflected in the, the comments toward the end of the movie uh, from uh, General uh, William Westmoreland, who says something that is uh, unimaginably awful. But what's important is that I don't think at the time he thought he was saying something awful. This was baked in to a significant manner of thinking, uh, certainly among the political and military hierarchy in the country, and then filtered down, of course, to the American people, which was that this was okay because they don't value life the way we do. And that, of course, you say it now and you know like, it's, it's preposterous. It, it has to be preposterous. It's preposterous literally across the planet. And in doing so, it uses racially de derogatory terminology oh, as yeah, he sure. talks about yes. them. And, and to your point, I think this is the value, not just with this specific Westmoreland comment, but also when you hear kind of Walt Rostow at the beginning of the movie be asked, you know, can you tell me how we got to this point? I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, where you realize that these individuals are saying things that now we watch and say, man, that's a gotcha, or that's right. an awful quote. They probably hated that. And at the moment, did not think anything they said was wrong or out of turn or uh, inflammatory. Phil, let's talk more after the movie. We'll see it now. Uh, here it is, uh, from 1974, co-produced and directed by Peter Davis. It won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, Hearts and Minds.
Back with Phil Mattingly. Phil, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Phil picked Hearts and Minds, came in number 39 on the New Republic's list of the 100 most significant political films of all time. I read an analysis of the film from a Vietnam vet, a journalist, uh, this morning. And I wanted to get into an argument with him while completely respecting everything that he had to say. I didn't take away anything from any time I've seen Hearts and Minds, which is four or five times now. I don't see it as negative to veterans at all. It's not, that's not what it's about, right? I mean, it's telling a different story. Right. And I don't think any rational person blames a single combat veteran for the mistakes made in Vietnam. The blame is on a much more powerful group of people. Right. And yeah. and, and, and those are those are political mistakes and mistakes that we uh, continue to make uh, uh, today, as do countries across the globe. It's an important point because I understand the snap objection from people who That's served right. either I, in the war or in the wake yeah. of it. And yet my view of it was the micro of following the personal stories of the veterans that were chosen for the piece is designed in a way to underscore the tragedy of the macro, right? Of right. the decisions that had been made for decades leading up to it in the wake of World War II by the people who should have known better, who should have leveled with the American people, who shouldn't have sent people into these places. I always viewed the veterans in the movie as a mechanism to show the tragedy That's right. That's that was created point. by That's, others. Yeah. Peter Davis, who directed this film, is my uncle. He married my dad's sister. No kidding. Yeah. We still speak close. I'm close to his kids. And Peter had a point of view, and sure. he wanted to get that point of view across. That's not to say, if you ask Peter, did you tell the whole picture of Vietnam? He would say, no. No, in no way did I tell the whole picture of Vietnam. And again, I think if you want to understand it, to watch Hearts and Minds, then go watch something else, right? Sure. And you want to watch a documentary on how poorly Vietnam veterans were treated when they got home, that's, that's worthy also, right? That is a, another part of the story that, that, that we got wrong. Those were not the guys to treat poorly uh, when they came home from uh, doing their duty and serving in Vietnam. No question about it. I think the value is understanding what you're watching. There's a point of view. There, there is undeniably yeah. a point of view. That's, and why, that's okay. That's and it's what, not a sin. And it's not that's a, why it's good. Yes, <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about this a couple of times, but I just think it's so important that what this does is it fills in gaps. It illuminates yeah, yeah. pieces of this story that people either had no visibility to, had limited vis visibility to, or frankly were lied to about. Yeah. And I think that's the value. And you can see it, you know, the analogs to these days where Restrepo is a very different movie than Taxi to the Dark Side. Like they're, they're telling different pieces of a story that gives you a more well-rounded view of what actually happened and that's the value. Yeah, everybody should feel a little uncomfortable about Vietnam. It's complicated and every point you have, there is a counterpoint to be made and it should give you pause. Everyone should take a beat before expressing a clear definitive opinion about what went right, what went wrong, what should have happened, and what should not have happened in Vietnam. The discomfort is the point, right? And, and the uneasiness you feel in watching it, hopefully, and I'm, I'm again, not gonna speak uh, for the filmmaker and his team, but is to hopefully shape how future generations, not just view Vietnam, but view future conflicts, view their willingness to get into conflicts, and I think view the haphazard decisions that were made in a way that takes into account the humanity and the reality of these types of situations. That's a good spot to uh, leave it. Uh, Phil Mattingly, thanks so much for, for being here. We thanks so much it. for having me. I really right. appreciate it. That's a wrap on uh, Phil Mattingly, but the political films continue here on TCM, so stick around. More to come. Next on TCM, the lives of others, then born in flames, and later, bicycle thieves. Steal away with TCM tonight.